We're going to begin geometry by discussing three undefined terms, point, line, and plane. And we're get, we'll start that off with page one of the unit one packet, and then use those three terms to help us define the terms below that. So point is representative of a location. So a location, and as such has no so size or length associated with it. we would represent it. So represented by a dot and named using a capital letter. So it's going to become increasingly important that we're able to use proper notation when we're, when we're des describing concepts. Um, so in this example, we'll have a a dot represented by the capital letter A, and we would read that as point A. A line is a connected set of infinitely many points that extend in opposite directions. So usually it's depicted with two points. Let's say I name it A and B, and we connect those two points with a line drawn through it with arrow, arrows at the tip. So if you think about what a line represents, it's essentially a bunch of points. And if we kept drawing an infinite number of points between A and B and, and extending beyond that, we see that it essentially becomes a line um, because there are so many points up um, that are connecting those initial two points and beyond that um, it's represented by the concept of a line. So a plane is, and there's going to be a key term here, but it's an infinite set of points forming a connected and so this time, we're thinking about a sheet of paper, we're thinking about a wall, the ceiling, the floor, a connected flat surface extending infinitely. And so here is where it, it separates from a line. As far as the definition, it's extending infinitely far in and instead of opposite directions, I'm going to capitalize and underline in all directions. So we're thinking about not only two points, but a point that's out here, a point that is extending in all directions. Sometimes what you'll see uh, in a figure is a quadrilateral that looks like a sheet of paper that's slanted or a parallelogram if you uh, want to picture as that um, and that's representative of the plane that's how we draw a plane um, but you want to keep in mind that there's points in all direction outside of that plane as well um, that fall upon that plane so you want to picture a piece of paper but that piece of paper is infinite okay so from that from those three undefined terms we're now going to define what collinear points are and collinear has the word co in it which is when we do word dissection, that means with, so with a line. So that's going to be points. Because we use that word so often, I'm going to abbreviate points as PT, points as PTS, point as PT. So this word right there is points that lie on the same line. Coplanar, if we use the same methodology is with a plane. So points that lie on the same plane. And a line segment is if I were to take a line and I cut off the infinite ends of it, it becomes just a part of a line consisting of two endpoints.
and all points in between. And between, I'm going to abbreviate as BTWN. A ray is if I imagine a line, but instead of cutting off both infinite ends, I just cut off one side that is infinite. And so I get a part of the line consisting of an endpoint and all points on one side of the endpoint. And finally, we have opposite rays. And I look at an opposite ray as uh, essentially a line made up of two rays. So rays that have same endpoint and lie on the same line, but extends in opposite directions. So what does this look like? So if you picture a line, our line is really made up of two opposite rays. So we'll draw three points and call it A, B, C. If I draw a line through and I am asked to name opposite rays, the proper notation for a ray is you begin with the, the common endpoint of B. So that must come first in your notation. So we would say ray BA, where B is the common endpoint, and ray, again, you must begin with the common endpoint, ray BC. And um, again, that's different from ray CB, because ray CB, if I highlight it for you guys, is going in this direction. So that's ray CB, and that's different from ray BC. So direction matters for that one. Um, so now um, we've talked about how to name rays, in, in this example for opposite rays, I didn't talk about naming a line segment. When you name a line segment, um, you're going to make sure that, so for example, let's say you have two points. And remember we cut off the infinite, the infinite ends of a line and we get a, a piece of that line called a line segment. So you have those two endpoints and all the points in between is represented by that segment we would write this is segment AB by putting a segment above that. And a segment doesn't have the arrow tips at the end of it. So this is the same thing as BA because there's no direction to that segment. And then for a line, the correct notation for a line would be you would have um, AB for uh, where we define lines. I'm writing to the right of that. Line AB would have a, the notation of an arrow above the, the two points, any two points that are on that line. So line AB, or you can also say line BA. And those would mean the same thing. The way that we would properly name a plane would be there's usually a cursive letter up on the top. So let's say there's W there. Well, that would be plane W. Uh, 